surface. And they're trying to put themselves in the scene. They're saying, now, if I was standing on Earth and looked out over this scene, what would I see in the environment? What would I imagine is under my feet? And so they're transporting themselves to the surface of Mars, and they're trying to do the same thing. And um, that's, a, that's a part of the scientific method. You, you try to take what you know and e extend it to an environment that you don't know. And as these images come back and we get more and more of them, we're going to be able to build up a picture of what it's like there on the planet. And we'll add that to the trench information that we get. And a picture will develop in which, in the scientific, uh, the very scientific publications that come out of this, will begin to piece together that world. Unlike what happened with the rovers, uh, these rovers were supposed to be there for 90 days and they're there over four years. My understanding is this project, there's a very finite period of time that, that we couldn't hope for seeing Phoenix operating four years from now. Well, you know, we always, uh, we always hope, and I'm sure we'll ask it, are you alive after the winter's over? But, you know, um, we're going to be embedded in uh, carbon dioxide frost. It's going to be dry ice all over us, all around us. The temperature of the electronics is going to drop to dry ice temperatures. We don't have any sun on the solar panel, so it won't be able to heat itself. So we are going to be finding ourselves very, very cold. Electronics break, batteries break, the solar arrays themselves that are our power source, they may break. So you just need a few failures for the equipment not to function. So the scientists then have this finite period of time to get as much work as they possibly can. Describe to us the system that's been laid out that, you know, the science team is, is hanging out waiting for that downlink to come in and they're ready to move that information over to the next room and begin right away. Yeah, it's, it punching. is like a ballet. It's a ballet that has been practiced over and over. Every day, every Sol on Mars, they're going to be doing work that they have planned. They've worked it with everybody, from the people who send the commands to do the work to the people who analyze the data and then report it back, and then they cycle through that. That system has been tested over and over. Uh, and the thing that's exciting is they're going to be thrown all kinds of new information that's going to be uh, very interesting how they adapt to it. One of the images we're seeing wow, now we shows surface yes. surface variability may be associated with the polygons. Yeah, you can you can see variations on the surface. We just didn't know when we were looking from above what it was going to look like from the surface. Whether it was going to be like a billiard table, absolutely flat, no variation. Uh, clearly, the horizon is very very straight, but uh, but we have. A lot of morphology, very, very interesting shapes in the near near uh, the lander. Now, these images are in black and white. Will we be seeing color images? We Have will we indeed. We will be seeing color images in the future. So I, I think that as the team begins to try to go over what they practice and modify it by the environment and what they see, um, they'll be exercising a dance among all of the different players and that dance will then make absolutely the best use possible of these 90 days. Of course, the first week we're spending learning how safe environment is, how the spacecraft is working, how to live with any quirks in the spacecraft behavior, and then we'll be using those in the following weeks to maximize the science return. And the, the science team and the engineers will be living on Mars time. Absolutely, they will. That's right. That's something that we, the science teams learned how to do, the engineering teams learned how to do on the MER rover times of day. And they're going to be doing that with this lander as well. Now, the sun is up all of the time in the north at this time. So the day-night issue for the Phoenix lander is going to be a little less severe because you're going to be able to do work uh, pretty much uh, around the clock on Mars. Now, Phoenix would, was not going to be able to send us a tremendous amount of pictures because it was it landed around dusk time or just before dusk. The the, the sun is uh, setting uh, mm -hmm. at this time, but the primary reason uh, that we're uh, not getting a lot more images at this time is the time at which the 
orbiter is in communication with the surface. It'll come around in another hour and 50 minutes and take more data, and that'll be going on throughout the rest of the, the days to come. Well, you should see this room. It is just jam-packed with all the engineers. They, they were done. The, the, the operation has been handed over to the surface ops at the University of Arizona, but you couldn't tear these inger, engineers away from this room. They were going to stay and see that downlink and these first images, and here they are. So let's go back to the room right now.